Hey, what's up guys? My name is Jenna. Welcome to episode 62 of Game Programming. So, it has been a while. I realize, long time no see. But, um, I've been really busy and basically the way that I'm going to do game programming episodes from now on is when I have time. Okay, so if I have like an extra hour or something in my week, then um, I'll try and knock down one or two and we'll see what happens. But, um, obviously university comes first and, um, and yeah. But, you know, you know, that doesn't mean that I'm not going to be making videos, it's just going to mean that, you know, I'm going to make them when I have time, not on a schedule. Um, but I'll still try and knock down maybe two or three a week. Okay, so basically we ended kind of here and um, we, we, we kind of wanted to, send, to set a location, a spawn location for our player here. And one thing I might do, actually I've been thinking about this for a while, is actually reducing the, the, the sprite size of this player down to... Um, one tile so in other words at the moment he's like 32 by 32 might bring him down to 16 by 16 so he matches one tile or something like that um so that's a possibility but yeah so we had this um this tile right so if i open if i come over here and i open um let's see here let me just find my okay sweet so in, in our rain directory um, if we hit up resources, levels, and spawn, and let's just open it with, actually we can probably just open it like that. Um, we have this little teal tile here. Now, one thing that we kind of wanted to do initially was, um, scan this and set that as a spawn location. I've decided against that though, because that's not really very practical at all, because the thing is like, at the moment we know that there's going to be wood behind it, but we don't always know that. And then there's also the fact that, you know, why why set it in that it's not it's not like the spawn location is going to change or anything um for this particular level and it might you know in the future if we want to return to the spawn level it might remember where where we were last in the spawn level as well so it's just not really practical to have a fixed spawn location in the actual level file so i'm going to open this in paint.net and i'm basically going to get rid of it um, and one one other thing that I'm going to do before i get rid of it is actually check out the coordinates of where it's at so if i just hold my mouse over it and i'll just Oops, select like the pencil tool. Um, you can see over here that it actually says the coordinates. So it says that it's at 19,62. So I'm just going to open up Notepad and type in 19,62 so I don't forget. Um, and that's going to be where we spawn at. And that's it, okay? So you can see right there, 19,62. Great. Um, yeah, we can, we can just write over that, just like that, save it, okay? And now we should be good to go. Um, so there's a few different ways of handling this, uh, again, I guess it depends on what you want to do, but one of the ways that I like handling it personally is, um, I like creating stuff called, basically like a helper class kind of thing. So, um, over here in level, am I, I'm just thinking if I should put it in a level, probably in level, yeah, um, I'll create a new class and I'll call this something like, um, tile coordinate. Okay, literally, that's all it's going to be. And this is going to be a very simple class. I, this is just me, like, I just like organizing things. Um, and in fact, we might be, we might just get rid of coordinate. I'm just thinking to see how does that sound, tile coordinate. No, we'll keep that there for now. Um, and basically, all this is going to do, right, is it's going to have two variables, x and y, right? Make sure they're integers. And what we can access from this tile coordinate is basically public tile coordinate so we're just going to have a constructor and it's going to have x and y right and then all we can, all we have to do here really is just say this dot x equals x this dot y equals y and then if we want to access it right we can make a bunch of methods like public um int you know let's just say x right and that will simply return x um, and it'll be a bit 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 more complicated in a minute but public int y and that will return y and public int um xy maybe and it might be an array so what this might be is and you'll see you'll see what this is in a minute but whoops can't type it's been a while since i've actually programmed anything um i don't know anything but you know in on this computer at least um, so we'll return maybe a, we'll return, let's just create a quick integer, um, we'll call it, you know, S, I don't know, R maybe for result, 
um, and we'll set it equal to new int two, and then we'll set one uh, zero equal to x, one equal to y, and then we'll return the, we'll return it. All right, so that's one way of doing it. So I'll return both of them in an array. Um, what else could we do? Probably return the actual tile coordinate, but I think we'd have to. Yeah, so in other words, that's probably it for now. Um, one thing that we need to calculate though is, you know, when we do set the tile coordinate, we, want, we just want to set the coordinate. So in other words, our coordinate right now is 1962. Now remember what the size of the tiles is? The, t the size of the tiles is um, 16, right? So for now, all right, this, it, it probably won't change throughout our game. That's one thing I want to point out as well. Tiles probably won't change, like the size of tiles. It's not like some levels will have 32 size tiles, some levels will have eight size tiles. They'll all have 16 size tiles, so we don't have to worry about this. But what we what we should have is a private final in. So make sure that it's a constant, basically. And we'll call it tile size. And we'll set that equal to 16. And all we need to do here is say that this dot x equals x times tile size. So in other words, that will basically just find the um, the size for us. And then that, that should pretty much work out wonderfully. So an example of this can be um, in the player class. So when we actually do set our x and y, and we don't at the moment, right, we set this dot x equal to x, that's sort of our spawn location. And what I'll probably do, maybe next episode, is I'll actually talk about setting spawn locations and how we're going to how we're gonna roll with that. I just wanted to spend today's episode on the tile coordinate class, just because um, yeah, like people usually don't think of doing this, and it's really useful. Like, I love it. Um, so I thought I'd just share that with you guys. Cool story, bro. All right. Um, okay, so let's see how we're going to set that. Okay, so how does it, how, okay, so let's check this out. So currently the player uh, gets set in X and Y like that. That's cool. What we could do, though, instead is, um, this was something I was working on actually earlier. So we'll get rid of this for now. But, um, Okay, so we don't actually set an. Uh, am I right? Like, this cannot work. Yeah. Okay, so we've got another constructor here in player, <coughs> which deals with in X and in Y, and that actually sets the location. So, what we could do here is we could simply say that, um, you know, player equals new player, and we've got two coordinates to fill out. We could just say that, for example, tile coordinate um, player spawn, right? Player spawn equals new tile coordinate um, and then we'll say that maybe you know 1962 right that's what we wanted to roll as and then what we can say here is that um, it's simply player spawn dot x and that's going to be player spawn dot y and that's it and then that should work right so if we launch our game we can see that we actually spawned that um, and you know, it just helps us kind of organize it because we, um, you know, it's just 1962. And then if we have to use it again, then we can simply by referencing that class. And if we want to create another one, then we can. So it's like we're sort of, we've created a system to deal with tile coordinates, which is very useful. Um, although the name's kind of long, tile coordinate. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that's kind of how that works. And it's very useful. And you'll find we'll, we'll be using this type of classes, these types of classes very um, often in the future of this game. But Basically, that's what tile coordinate does, and um, next time we're going to talk about actually implementing a player spawn system so that we don't have to, you know, have this whole constructor thing, and we can actually set them natively, basically. So yeah, um, that's it. It's episode 62, I believe, and I'll see you guys next time. Later. Later.